All right, so the first one we're going to do is called glazing. And for this one, you are going to actually apply a color on top of a section you've already painted. So it, you have to have a dry painted shape for this one. And so what glazing does is it kind of doubles the intensity of the color by adding a second layer. Um, or you can combine tones together. So um, I'll start with this orange that I did. This was my flat wash. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go back over it with the same color in part of it. So the glazing technique means that you're adding another layer, basically, to an area that you've already, um, you've already painted. And if you use the same color, it kind of doubles the intensity of that color. So um, like your flat wash shape is a good one to do, where if you paint the same color on top, um, you'll see that it, 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 when it's wet, it's hard to tell, but when it dries, you're gonna see that it's, it's um, like there's more intensity because you're just adding more layers of paint. You can also glaze with a different color, and you can see if you get um, kind of a combination of tones here. So I'm gonna glaze red over the orange. So I just, I just did a little section of glazing where I painted yellow on top of blue. And you don't really see the yellow because, like I said, the, the lighter color is not really going to show up over the darker color. But I got a nice green from adding the yellow to the blue. So sometimes you can get a combination of tones, too. The next technique is called negative painting. And negative painting essentially means that you are painting around the object that um, is usually like a, very, like a very light colored object. So a good example is if you want to make clouds with watercolor, you paint the blue around the cloud shapes and you leave the white of the paper to be the clouds. That's, that's kind of a, a, a classic example. Um, you can also use it for things like reflection. So maybe you have like the edge of a surface that you want to show is like very bright and has a highlight on it. So you might paint around the white in order to leave the highlights. So I'll show you a couple, I'll show you those two examples. I'll try to, again, it's like we're, um, you know, we're doing this exercise with just random shapes and it's much easier, like when you go to your word design projects, you're going to have specific things you're trying to, to use the paint to capture but we can try to kind of simulate it here. So um, the first one I'll do is I'm going to imagine that, that this um, triangular shape in the top corner here is like some kind of reflective surface, like a piece of glass or like a shiny countertop or something. So I'm going to use negative painting to try to show um, that it has a reflective surface to it. So I'll kind of leave some areas of it open or white and just kind of move the brush in a way that kind of tries to simulate that, that look of something reflective or shiny, something like that. So instead of filling in the whole shape and then painting white over it, the, the way you might do with you know, an acrylic paint or a temper paint, with watercolor, I'm gonna leave the paper tone as the brightest part of the shape, and that's the negative painting. I'll, I'll do the cloud example, too. I'll do it in this... Um, this lower section here. So if I want to show clouds, then I'm going to paint around the cloud shape with the blue instead of painting the clouds themselves. Because the watercolor is so transparent and the white of the paper is really the brightest color that you can get. And you may notice like these watercolor kits don't even have the color white in them because Oftentimes, you don't really need the color white with watercolor. You, you want to use the paper tone 
as your uh, as your brightest tone. All right, so that's negative painting, where you paint around a bright object and you let the white space of the paper be the shape of that object. Okay, the next one I really like. This is um, this one I think is is pretty fun because. Um, it's challenging, but it also has a really um, interesting look to it. So this one's called dry brush, and for this you need a totally dry brush. So it can't be something that has already been used today. Like you can't have uh, water in the bristles. And I, I find that these kind of like bigger brushes, the ones that um, sort of look like a mop, um, are really good for this because the bristles are uh, kind of spread out a little bit more. So first, I'm going to take a wet brush, and I'm going to add some water to um, one of the watercolor pods to get it activated. So in this case, I'm going to use green. So I'm going to add some water and get that, get that um, enough water in the watercolor pod that it's, um, it's, it's wet. And then I'm going to take that dry brush I talked about, and I'm just going to tap the, the tips of the bristles very, very gently onto that watercolor pot I just activated. And then if you do it right, it's actually a little bit too much water. If you do it right, you should get, there we go. So you should get kind of a, um, like a scratchy texture or look to it. If the tips of the bristles get too much water on it, like that's a little bit, those darker marks, that's more water or more paint than I want. So I'm just gonna dab the brush onto a paper towel for a few times and then go back. And then that's the look I'm looking for there is kind of a scratchy look. So this, like I said, this one's, I, I find this one fun because it's challenging to do, and each brush that you use will give you a slightly different look or a slightly different texture. It's really good for things like grass or uh, tree bark or like wood grain or animal fur or hair or anything where you need kind of a rough looking texture. So this last technique is called lifting and blotting. And you'll also need two brushes for this. Um, you'll need a brush you're gonna use for the color and then you'll need a clean brush. And the clean brush you want to be, I think, kind of small, like a smaller one. So I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use this kind of, I'm gonna use this kind of medium sized one here. Uh, so this medium small one to do the, color application, and I'm going to use this smaller one as the clean brush. Um, I'm also running out of room on my, on my sheet here. Um, so if that happens, try dividing up. If you have a shape left, you could divide it up into two shapes, um, or you could get another sheet of paper and finish up your last technique on a, on a new sheet. Okay, so lifting and blotting. Um, again, I'm going to kind of use this cloud example as a way to show lifting and blotting um, because it's just a really good um, example for this. So I'm going to mix up kind of a purplish blue here. And um, for this, you don't want a ton of water um, in your paint. So enough to cover like a flat wash, enough to cover the, um, the area you're working with, but you don't want it to be like super saturated with water. Um, otherwise, it just kind of turns into a, a big puddle. So I'm going to just paint this flat wash. 
so it's nice and even. And then with my smaller clean brush, I'm gonna take some clean water and I'm gonna do the lifting part of this. And lifting is almost like an eraser. It's sort of like erasing with the brush where you use the tips of the brush and instead of pulling the brush, you sort of push the brush. So you, um, and then that sort of picks up and removes the color that you just put down. So instead of dragging the brush, you push it against the bristles and the bristles of your clean brush kind of pick up the paint that you put there. And it helps to then kind of blot the brush on a paper towel after you do each lift. And so this can kind of create some, like if you look at the difference between these cloud shapes that I did with the lifting and blotting versus the cloud shapes I did with the negative painting, you just have a different look to them. Um, the, lifting, the lifted cloud shapes are more sort of fuzzy um, and kind of atmospheric and the negative painted cloud shapes are much like more graphic and kind of sharp, sharp edges. And then you can finish off this technique. This part's kind of optional, but you can take a paper towel and this is the blotting part and you can kind of push and soak up a, even more of that, that um, water and, and paint that's on there. So if you can do this, this is almost like gets to be artistic use of the paper towel. So I'm almost kind of painting with the paper towel here. I'm just kind of gently, gently dabbing. And um, this kind of stops, stops the water from moving around and also picks up and soaks up a little bit more of your lifted paint. So li the lifting and blotting is kind of two techniques in one. You can use them separately or together. Um, it also can be used as a way to um, maybe erase some mistakes or remove some paint that you didn't want put down. So like, um, let's say, let's say I got some paint too far over the edge of my shape <coughs> where I didn't want it. I could attempt to lift and blot that paint away. It's not gonna erase it entirely, but it definitely gets most of it cleaned up. So it can be used both as an artistic technique or as a, a mistake fixer, as a um, sort of a whiteout. <coughs> 